Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's lesson, we are going to briefly examine what is a C18 column whenever you hear that term coming up in regards to HPLC. So that starts right now. All right, so a C18 column is a very common column when you are working with HPLC. So the column itself is typically going to have a silica layer. So it's a silica bed or a silica base layer. And the way that that looks is you've got your oxygen silica based content. And I'll draw it out a little bit here so we can use some examples. All right, and this would continue upwards with another oxygen, another silica, and then you end up with some methyl groups on the side here, and then you get to the part where you have the C18 modification. Okay, so C18 is referring to the number of carbons that are going to be on the modified part of your column. So this right here that I've written in blue, we could again refer to that as the silica base layer or bed okay so it's got a nice basic layer and when I say basic I just mean it's laying a base it doesn't necessarily mean that it is base okay and then you've got the C18 portion which we'll draw in red here so the C18 portion is the modified part that's going to be coming off of the top and that will be CH2 now you're going to want 17 of these and a CH3. So the term C18 is referring to the fact that there is a total of 18 carbons in this modification here. And this would be applied along the entire chain. So for the sake of space, I'm just going to write C18 here, right? And then as you're moving along, you would have another C18 modification here, right? And when that occurs across the entire column bed, you call it a C18 column. Now, what are C18 columns used for? Well, if you take a look at them, the C18 properties mean that these are going to be non-polar columns. So if we look at all of the hydrocarbon content that's up here, there's a lot of carbon hydrogen content and not much in terms of polarity as far as the C18 modification is concerned. So this creates a non-polar column and that means the following your polar analytes are going to go through very fast okay so a polar analyte is going to come off the column it's going to have a low retention time so rt here stands for retention time okay if it's nonpolar it's going to be retained to a much greater degree because it's going to be able to have interactions with the similar nonpolar column so a nonpolar analyte is going to stay on the column much longer it would have a high retention time relative to the polar compounds okay so if we were to run a group of compounds through a c18 column under the correct conditions we would expect the first things to come off of the column provided our settings were correct would be the polar analytes and then the nonpolar analytes would be what come last with the most nonpolar being the ones that would come off at the very end uh, if at all, it's going to depend on your solvent phases. So as far as solvents are concerned, okay, you're going to use polar solvents to pair with the nonpolar column. So when you use a C18 column, you use polar solvents, and then you have the nonpolar column. So some of the common solvents uh, to use, most people start with water, which is obviously very polar, and then it's very common to have a gradient or at least a mixture of two or more. So methanol is a common one. If you want to get a little more nonpolar, you can go to something like acetonitrile. And then finally, some people will use uh, like ethers of some nature, uh, which can also be common like THF, uh, tetrahydrofuran. So those are some of the varying solvent options that get paired with the nonpolar column. Now this overall is referred to as reverse phase HPLC. And reverse phase HPLC gets its name because the 
original HPLC setup was the opposite of this. It had a polar column and nonpolar solvents. And now when you flip it, that's where it gets the name reverse phase HPLC. And if you're interested in a lot more detail regarding reverse HPLC or HPLC in general, column chemistry, uh, there's all sorts of things that happen with columns in terms of changing the groups, changing the solvents, end capping. Um, if you're interested in any of that, we have a full lecture course. I'm in the middle of working on it right now, but the first four lectures in the series are out. I'll leave that down in the description below. So if you want to educate yourself further regarding HPLC, I would strongly encourage you to check out that playlist because it's going to give a lot more in terms of details here. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up what we had to cover regarding C18. This is a C18 column. Again, it's a nonpolar column, usually paired with polar solvents, and it will separate out your polar analytes first, and then your nonpolars will come last, uh, relative time depending on the solvent system that you use. And overall, C18s are typically applied to reverse phase HPLC. And reverse phase HPLC is one of the most common techniques in HPLC, which may be why you hear C18 columns thrown around a lot uh, whenever you're studying HPLC or you might be working in a lab. So that's it. As always, smash the like button because that helps the channel grow. If you subscribe, you'll be up to date anytime we release content like this. And that's it. I will see everybody in the next one. Thanks for learning with us.